Hi guys, what's going on and welcome back to another episode of Total War Arena. So, today we are going to be taking a bit of a look as, at Sulla as a cavalry commander. Is he any good and is he worthwhile? Is it better to use him over Scipio or it's kind of not worthwhile? So, I have actually never used Scipio as a cavalry commander. Obviously, um, I use him for my javelins and um, I'm starting to go up the Roman infantry line with him as well. But I've never really previously thought about using him as a cavalry commander until someone mentioned it in the comments. What do I think of Scipio and um, of... Sulla as a cavalry commander, and well, I thought I might make a decent video. So we'll have a bit, let's have a bit of a look at him and how his skills apply. So first thing to note is obviously fortify doesn't apply. Um, it's a, a, a melee, a, what shields and melee infantry um, ability, so it means it doesn't apply to cavalry. So it does mean that you've immediately lost one of ability, one of his abilities, and it's kind of one of his abilities that works pretty well with Sulla and particularly works well with prescription. So. Yeah, it's quite a loss, really, to not be able to have access to that. So that means you've got two options. You've got Whip, and you have got a Prescription. So what does that give us? Obviously, as a general, Whip is probably the most useful. So that is giving us the Movement Speed Bonus, which at Tier 6, which we're looking at now with these Equites, um, Equites, is uh, 22%. It's obviously a decent Movement Speed Bonus. It's going to make them quite a lot quicker. We'll test this out in battle, but you know, it's going to be taking, taking them up sort of probably around the 8 um, Movement Speed mark. Obviously, deployable construction time is completely irrelevant. Then there's the penetration weapon uh, damage increase and the melee attack. Well, the penetration weapon damage is going to result um, in just a, in a very slight increase in the amount of damage you could do, but they don't have a particularly great amount of penetration. 23 plus 27, so what 16% of that is going to be? Two points, it's going to be like three or something. So the, the amount of base damage increase you're going to get is going to be pretty small, and so it's not particularly useful. Um, the melee attack. Now that's obviously useful. 52% melee attack is good. It's going to mean you stand understand reasonable chances of actually landing hits. But um, you've got to remember, a melee attack on cavalry tends, for whatever reason, to be quite high. As it is, it's got quite a high natural base value. 118 is higher than an equivalent tier infantry, I should have thought. Um, yeah, only 99 on an equivalent tier 6 Romans. If we look at the other Romans, I'm um, 100. So yes, it's quite high anyway. So... That is going to make that very high, but I mean, melee attack only determines hit chance, percentage of you landing a hit, not the amount of damage you're actually going to be do once you land a hit. So, um, is that that useful? I, I don't know. I find it hard to believe that a 50% melee attack is going to be as useful on a cavalry with already high melee attack than it is, well, say, an infantry unit. It's just going to mean you're guaranteed to land a hit, but it doesn't increase the amount of damage you're going to do. So, is that useful? Then, obviously, the one being prescription. Obviously, very useful ability, so like a nice debuff. It's a continual debuff. It would kind of be working in a similar way to Hasdrubal's um, Deep Pockets, I think is the one, um, where you're debuffing. You can select which unit to debuff. But obviously, it's going to be a permanent debuff, and you only have to have it activated on one of your units. So, yeah, that's certainly nice, giving an enemy a minus 44% melee attack. Certainly nice. Um, it's certainly going to be quite effective against some of them, like Barbarian Infantry and stuff like that, which already have quite a low melee attack. Um, it's a real shame you can't use it with fortify because if you can that would make these guys really quite strong I think but the lack of that fortify personally I think it's going to mean it's kind of no better than um, Scipio uh, thankfully you do get a uh, proprietary unit charge if you don't use Scipio and it's actually a nice charge and you've got a 30 second cooldown 4 second duration but obviously you lose all that impact damage that you get with Scipio you know that 40% or something 35% to tier 6 you're going to be losing all of that um, so yeah, bit of a balancing act. But anyway, I think I've raffled enough. Let's hop into battle and see how we get on with these guys. So, we are loading into battle. Uh, looks like we're top tier, although almost all the team is tier 6. Mark, oh, a couple of unlucky tier 4s here. Oh, got dragged in by this tier 5 unit they've got with them. Um, so, let's spawn off in the centre and see where we want to go. So, obviously, it's going to change the playstyle, I think, considerably. We've got the movement speed now, which we didn't previously, obviously, with whip. We've got to be careful to remember that we don't whip ourselves into retreat because that's kind of easy to do. And um, we're going to remember to keep prescription activated on one unit so that we get that effect on the enemies when we get engaged. Um, we'll just see what's around. We'll play it a bit careful. So let's just get um, prescription activated on one of the units. Gives a reasonable radius. And then let's have a quick go see what we get out of the movement speed. So the base movement speed of Roman Cavalry, which is what you get normally, is 7.48. If we whip, we go to... 8.99. That's actually not to be sneered at. Um, that was a decent increase there. 
So, okay, and we get that, um, we can have that basically 50% of the time. So that's certainly not a nice, and it's certainly going to be, quite, it's going to make you quicker than Greek cavalry. It's, um, yeah, it's going to change the playstyle. It should certainly catch people out if they weren't expecting it. we have got to watch out for these elite uh, companions, these Greek cavalry. These would obviously do a lot of damage to us if they managed to get a charge into us. Which is obviously what we want to be preventing. Doesn't look like they've come out. Oh, there they go. Let's see if we can keep our whip going. We're still going to be significantly slower than Barbarian Cavalry there, or our mini is Barbarian Cavalry, which is going to be up like 12, 13, 14 meters a second, so significantly faster than what we are. So I'm just keeping out of uh, and covering out of the way for now. It's such a shame to get fortified, that'd be lovely. Um, so what we've got? So we've got some enemy uh, Solaris hidden in the forest down there. Um, some enemy infantry around in the middle. Oops. Keep everyone selected. We'll keep harrying around, see if we see anything. We've not been thrown at any artillery yet. So perhaps the enemy haven't uh, currently got any enemy artillery in play. Careful we don't get hit by the peelers or anything like that. Um, really, we need to hang on and wait till we start to get some engagements going on. I don't really want to be the one to start the trouble. Uh, remember, we've got our prescription on our second unit. The enemy group cavalry is hiding at the back now as well, by the looks of things. So the enemy infantry is advancing down the centre. Uh, okay, so we've got a unit of Soleres are being engaged. Let's pull these guys back and bring the second unit forwards. So he's sending in his um, T5 room and heavy infantry, maybe to try and relieve his beleaguered cavalry. Whether well, it's going to be um, useful or not. Here's sure the main thing. The main problem I'm going to have is that the charge is a different hotkey. I'm not very good at hotkeys at the best of times, never mind when now they've changed it round, so it's R. Ah, I'm guaranteed to get this wrong, and I'm going to whip myself rather than charging. Um, so I want these Prince Pace to be engaged, really, before I go in for the charge. Obviously, there's the risk I'm going to be um, standing in the enemy flames slightly. Friendly flames slightly, but we'll go for it anyway, basically, because I just want to see how we get on. Yeah, so the charge is quite a bit less, and obviously we don't have a war cry or anything anymore um, to do a lot of damage in, in that sort of sense. Those guys are running through, so let's do the same. Try and... Oh dear, that wasn't a very good move. Come on guys, through the flames, through the flames, through the flames, and onto the back. So then let's go for a whip, see if we can start to rack up any serious amount of damage. Um, keep our strikes activated. Make sure our guys the back here aren't being too vulnerable. There's some good cavalry picking around. Obviously we're providing the support um, of having prescription activated, which is obviously not to be sneered at. Um, oh, how are we going to do this one? With difficulty, I think. I, I want to engage the... Oh, I've been capped out as well. Blimey. Can you sod off? Just getting that guy there, that guy there. So yeah, so we're not doing too badly, but I have kind of feeling that we'd be better with Oath of Perseverance activated. What on earth? Oh, chat for the wooden stakes. Try not to catch on them. Oh, something has just died badly. Ah, Greeks. Ah, and I'm routing. Okay, now I'm getting caught on the wooden stakes as well. Not going quite so well as I had planned. So, these guys are still alive. Um, and I'm not really resetting the base cap either, am I? Okay, looks like we've lost this. <laughs> okay, that didn't go quite as well as I had planned. Um, yeah, I just feel kind of losing out a bit with that charge. Wow, I was top player with under 2,000 points. Well done, team. Um, yeah, I feel you kind of losing out quite a bit with that charge ability. Um, it's not particularly great having the standard charge you're losing, all that impact damage. Um... Prescription is nice because you're providing that continual debuff. It makes you into much more of a support cavalry. And obviously when you're getting into a fight like fighting those Prince of Aids, you're taking 44% of their melee attack away. Which is almost probably all their Avengers activated. It only gives them 50% melee attack. So that's quite a significant um, debuff, which is nice. But it doesn't really help you. Um, you know, it's not increasing your attack ability. The melee attack, really I don't think is the problem with these guys anyway. They have a sufficient melee attack. It's more the weapon damage that is a bit lackluster than the penetration. So, I don't think it really increases much, to be honest. I'd much rather have a war cry. You know, routing an enemy unit is easily the best thing you can do. And 
that's kind of I feel that excels with Scipio. Warcry is really quite nice with that 25% morality buff. You know, you can get a rear flank on someone, you get that surprise rear flank, activate the Warcry, and you're almost a certain route. Whereas you just don't get that with this. Not to mention the fact you do Warcry does give a debuff as well. You know, if we look at Scipio's Warcry, and it also gives a 20% melee defense debuff, which is not to, you know, it's not um, that small. Um, and Oath of Perseverance is pretty similar, basically, to Fortify for Sulla. So, you know, Fortify giving is giving shield melee defense, but the actual value of shield melee defense is lower than um, normal melee defense. So, melee weapon defense um, is 61, whereas the shield defense is only well, 36 uh, upgraded. So, while on Scipio's Oath of Perseverance, it may seem like you're not getting such um, a... Um, such a buff because you're only getting 45% melee defense, it's a larger value that you're adding in percentage to. So the actual amount you're increasing is probably quite similar to the amount you are increasing with Sulla's Fortify. So Oath of Perseverance is basically Fortify, although Fortify you can toggle off Oath of Perseverance, you can't, which is obviously the downside of it. But I think his charge is pretty nice, that 36% impact damage, I think it gets higher once it's fully upgraded as well, it goes up to 40%, is better than anything Sulla can provide. And a little bit of movement speed with whip is nice, but it's kind of like a cavalry dash, and for me, it's not really worth it. So, can you use Sulla as a cavalry commander? Yes, absolutely, you can. And I think it's perfectly acceptable. I don't think it's bad. It certainly turns him more into support cavalry, and extra speed is nice. But for me, I think I'm going to be going up the cavalry line with Scipio for the moment. Unless, obviously, feel free to put in some suggestions of what I should be doing differently. Obviously, that really wasn't the greatest gameplay we've ever seen from me. Um, not that I ever really do any particularly great gameplay, but um, yes, yeah, so I'm quite short of time. I'm going to go out now, so we'll have to live with what we've got. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Yeah, let me know what you think about uh, Solo as a cavalry commander. Um, how would you play him? Would you have taken things a little bit differently? Um, do you about prescription or your units or something like that? So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you found this useful. If you have, let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel for lots more Total War Arena content. And thanks, guys. I shall see you all on the next video.